part of being a paleontologist is making sure you're always thinking and asking questions. How big were dinosaurs? What sort of food did this dinosaur eat? And how fast could it move? But in my time of being a paleontologist, I've never been presented with the question, what have dinosaurs got in common with ice cream? Well, the scientific answer to that is nothing at all. Dinosaurs have nothing in common with ice cream. But however, a business that we work with, Perbeck Ice Cream, have geniusly come up with this idea of incorporating dinosaurs with ice cream. But like with all good ideas, there is always a first for everything. And in this instance, that is the Megalosaurus. Now, the Megalosaurus was the first ever dinosaur to be named. And that was named by James Parkinson in 1822. But it wasn't actually until it was published in scientific literature in 1824 by Reverend William Buckland. But the ironic thing about this is when Reverend William Buckland published the material about the Megalosaurus, no one actually knew what a dinosaur was. And that's because the name dinosaur hadn't even been invented at that point in time. It wasn't until 18 years later when Professor Richard Owen of the London Natural History Museum published his paper of Megalosaurus and two other dinosaurs officially describing his new name, Dinosauria. So this here is really cool, which I've got. This is a direct cast and replica of the very first bone, which was assigned to the name Megalosaurus. And it has got a total of seven teeth protruding from the roots here. And it is absolutely fantastic. The original is actually on display in the Oxford Museum. But this really does give you a sense of what the actual thing is like. It is really incredible. Now this jawbone that I've got here was discovered in approximately 1797 in the Stonesfield Slate of Oxfordshire. The Stonesfield Slate dates back to approximately 145 million years ago, which would have been the mid-Jurassic. And during this period of time, the Megalosaurus would have likely been the apex predator. It would have been an in-coastal environment of densely packed forests with various seeding plants and conifers. And with the Megalosaurus reaching lengths of up to nine meters, it is very likely the Megalosaurus faced little competition from other predatory dinosaurs. So although Megalosaurus wasn't actually found here at the Jurassic Coast, part of paleontology is about making educated hypotheses. Megalosaurus is part of a bigger group of dinosaurs called Megalosaurs or Megalosaurids, which is a generalised family name for this particular group of dinosaurs. Therefore, although there's no bone evidence for Megalosaurus here at the Jurassic Coast, there's plenty of evidence for other Megalosaurid dinosaurs. Take this footprint, for example, which is thought to belong to a Megalosaur. This footprint was discovered in the Purbeck Limestone Group, right on Purbeck Ice Cream's doorstep. And we even have evidence in the form of bones as well. Take a look at this family tree here, and you'll notice the dinosaur called Derivenator. Now what's really cool is although Megalosaurus wasn't found at the Jurassic Coast, Derivenator was. So Derivenator is a Megalosaur dinosaur which was found along the Jurassic Coast. Now, the next time you pick yourself up a little pot of Purbeck ice cream, the Digosaurus, give a little think to the inspiration, the dinosaur that started it all, the Megalosaurus. <laughs>